Coming up next on New Central's All Mobile News Day. Tips on how to keep your dog safe from the rising canine influenza cases. And a popular street in Edmond is getting a long-awaited makeover. Plus, how Oklahoma is making strides for the state's autism community. All of this and more on this mobile edition of New Central News. Welcome to Youth Central News Mobile Journalism Day. Every story in our newscast was gathered by mobile devices today. I'm Jocelyn Schifferdecker. And I'm Eden Jens. Well, last week we told you the Oklahoma City Animal Shelter was temporarily closed as cases of canine influenza are on the rise. What are the symptoms and how worried should you be for your four-legged family member? And uh, it is very, very contagious. After going over 10 years of seeing no cases of canine influenza in the state, a resurgence has occurred in Oklahoma City. Animal shelters have temporarily closed down and owners are on high alert with how to keep their animals safe. The main thing is just to use common sense precautions and, and um, avoid places like dog parks and, and other places uh, like that. While the sunshine outside may seem ideal to take your dog to get exercise and run around, Barr advises staying isolated for a while. It spreads between dogs who are in direct contact or, or close proximity through the air. Once your dog tests positive for canine influenza, there is no official medication. However, there is a vaccine available to be proactive and hopefully prevent this. The vaccines are in really short supply right now, so if you're interested in vac vaccinating your dog, I would, I would urge you to contact your veterinarian as soon as possible. If you take your dog to a daycare or other area where they're in close contact with more dogs, it is heavily advised they get the vaccine. While every dog reacts differently to the sickness, it can be extremely dangerous for their health. There, there have been a few fatalities. It's, it's that, it, it can be that serious in some individuals. And as of now, most local animal shelters are not taking in any new strays to stop the disease from spreading. And with that, with these outbreaks going on, if you are looking to adopt a new pet this summer or to find shelter for a stray, you may have to wait a while for the animal welfare to reopen. U Central's Kendall Walton has the details. It's a quiet day here at the Oklahoma City Animal Welfare Shelter as the parking lot is completely empty with no one coming in or out with their pets. The shelter locked its doors after a major outbreak of canine flu, H3N2 influenza, and strep zoo impacted over 130 dogs and so far has claimed five lives. One Oklahoma City resident was upset and confused because she just wanted to adopt a dog. The shelter is working with veterinarian teams and an outside national organization to form a plan. Right now, that plan is every shelter dog is being treated with a round of antibiotics to get ahead of this outbreak. The shelter has also decided to deep clean each and every kennel as well as the entire clinic. So, uh, we made the difficult decision to close uh, and the, the point of closing is to try and keep it from getting out in the community and to try and uh, make sure that we can do the best we can for the dogs that are here in the shelter. And so, The OKC Animal Welfare released a statement saying its doors are locked indefinitely and for people to provide temporary shelter to stray animals until this is resolved. Back at my house, I provide a temporary housing for a stray mother cat about to give birth to kittens. Since the kittens were born, I have built a box full of warm fabrics and a heater to help transition the kittens into their new world, as well as keeping fresh food and water near the mother. Who knows, maybe in six to eight weeks when these little ones are ready, you can adopt them at the Oklahoma City Animal Welfare Shelter. In Oklahoma City, I'm Kendall Walton, U Central News. Thank you, Kendall. Well, here on campus, the UCO X TED event was held this morning in the Nye University Center with a general theme of personal and community growth. If you are unable to attend the event, you can still watch the talks online as they're released. And it has been so beautiful on campus these oh, past this few days. this entire week. I've seen so many people out and about walking around. Yeah, we're yeah. going to take a last, or sorry, first look with Destiny with the weather. Good evening. 
evening, Broncos. So it has been a very, very warm week, and today was no exception. It is very warm out today. It's about 78 degrees. It is a little windy, though, but I'm going to give you some weather headlines just to keep in mind for this upcoming week. So there is a chance of thunderstorms throughout the week this week. Um, those are supposed to come on later this week and early next week. So to stay, keep those in mind in case they develop into severe weather. And then there is going to be a warm week ahead. And with that warm week, there is there are some burn bans in some surrounding counties. None are in Oklahoma County currently. But just keep those in mind in case they develop in spread here. So some of the counties that have it are Blaine, Kingfisher, and Logan County. Those are the closest counties to us that have burn bans currently, and these are going to be going on until tomorrow. So just keep that in mind if you're going to be out in that area to stay safe. So that just means that you can't burn any trash, and then if anyone smokes, you can't throw your cigarette buds on the ground or else they could spread fires due to the warm weather, the dryness outside, and the high wind speeds. That is all I have for now. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you so much, Destiny. And a major street here in Edmond is finally getting its long-awaited upgrade. You Central reporter Emma Nichols has more. The resurfacing project has begun this week on South Broadway and East 2nd Street between US 77 and State Highway 66. The majority of the project will take place at night between the hours of 8 p.m. and 6 a.m., hopefully avoiding those major traffic jams in this busy area. The project will take around six months to complete, according to the project contractor, Haskell Lemon. A nearly $9 million resurfacing project designed to extend the life of the pavement and upgrade the driving conditions along US 77 Broadway, US 77 State Highway 66 and 2nd Street. During the day, repairs will be made to the road base under Broadway's southbound lanes just south of its intersection with 15th Street. This part of the construction is expected to take about a week, weather permitting, of course, according to the Edmond City government. Although this will slow down traffic for the time being, city officials promise there are better horizons ahead. Also give a better and smooth pavement um, through this highly, highly traveled corridor. To complete this project, two resurfacing teams will remove and replace the top two inches of asphalt across 40 lane miles, covering East 2nd Street to Broadway and along Broadway from its intersection with 2nd South to Edmond City limits. Next up is Broadway and 2nd Street. This construction is scheduled to begin in May and will require intermediate median closures. Be sure to plan your routes accordingly and prepare for delays during the construction period. Edmond, Oklahoma, Emma Nichols, U Central News. Definitely a good idea to give yourself some extra time or avoid those routes. Thank you so much, Emma. Well, this morning was annual Autism Advocacy Day at the Capitol. Government officials and citizens gathered in the rotunda to meet with multiple foundations from across the state to talk about how Oklahoma can better support this community with both additional resources and funding. And UCO is showing its support with the new What Were You Wearing exhibit, which is now on display to raise awareness about sexual assault. U Central's Cal Hayden has the story kind of the, the, the myth behind, you know, what were you wearing when you were assaulted. These intimate moments now exposed. These outfits embody what sexual assault survivors were wearing when they were violated. The What Were You Wearing exhibit located in the UCO library was organized by UCO's Project Speak in hopes to give survivors an outlet to heal and about teaching others about reducing harm and helping out. The idea behind this is to let students and faculty and staff just kind of be aware of, of their language and how they communicate and you know maybe change those words into like I believe you, I'm here to support you, what can I do to help and just to listen. The installation shows the variety of clothing alongside testimonies submitted anonymously to dispel a victim blaming myth that clothing somehow invites sexual assault. But even more revealing is these submissions are all from the surrounding community. Around March, we put out a survey for students to submit anonymous stories, um, faculty and staff. So these are from every, the whole UCO community. This is the second year UCO's Project Speak has organized this exhibit for Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and it is all inspired by a certain poem. The What Were You Wearing exhibit was actually inspired by a, um, a poem called What I Was Wearing by Mary Simmerling. Um, and in 2014, there were two professors, um, I believe from the University of Arkansas, that said, like, how can we bring this to life? And so that's where that was kind of born and brought in. And The exhibit will be on display through May 1st 
and is on the first floor of the UCO Max Chambers Library located on Central's campus. From Edmond, Cal Hayden, U Central News. Thank you, Cal. That is definitely a very powerful mm -hmm. exhibit for sure. Very powerful. But again, we've talked about the weather. It's super pretty outside. That mm -hmm. spring weather is definitely in full swing. Absolutely. Whenever we come back, U Central's Destiny will have your full look at weather. Raised to believe in the power of possibility, to always move forward, but never forget where I came from, to value hard work, ingenuity, and hospitality. On one hand, my people are rough and rugged. On the other, refined and elegant. They taught me how to love beautiful things and cherish my past, to seek out adventure, eat well, and to have a good time. So I keep their traditions alive every place I go. They call me Oklahoma City, but you can call me the modern frontier. Central News as a whole, you got to be in those different areas, like being on camera, being off camera, being in the control room, and so I feel like that is what prepared me most about being in the workplace. U Central and the Mass Comm Department has provided me all the tools and the fundamentals that are needed in order to thrive well and thrive fast at my job. Maybe it's time to hit the road and visit a place where stories unfold. This is the land of the ultimate road trip with sights old and new on Route 66. There's fun to be had, so much to do, and a few new surprises before you get through. Oklahoma has the most miles to share of Route 66. It's really quite rare. TravelOK.com will show you the way. Come see for yourself this iconic highway. Welcome back Broncos. It has been a warm day for the Oklahoma City and Edmond area. So just let's just look at the current conditions statewide. So we can start up in Guymon. So as we see up in Guymon, it is very, very warm there. They're feeling some late spring, early summer weather actually. It is about 88 degrees there currently. And if we look across this map, we can see that there's a lot of 80s, low 80s and high 70s weather. So then we move down to Woodward and Woodward, it is currently about 82 degrees. So then in Clinton, Oklahoma, it is 79. And then down in the Altus area, it's 82. And as we move on down in Lawton, it is about 70, or it's my bad, it's about 80 degrees there currently. And then 78 down in Ardmore. And then the Oklahoma City and Edmond area is about 77 currently. So like I said, we're definitely feeling some warmer spring weather. This weather is typically seen later in the spring, but we're seeing it now um, in early spring. And then over in McAllister and Idabel, those areas are both 75 degrees currently. And then as we move up, Enid and Ponca City are actually both 82. So like I said, some nice warm spring weather. Tulsa's 78. And then Miami, Oklahoma is 79. So as we move on to our seven day forecast, you can see there is a lot of sun, but there's also a lot of rain and thunderstorms as we look into next week. So starting with today, today out it was 78 degrees. It was a little windy outside, but nothing too strong. Um, but we are supposed to get some higher winds later on this week, which can lead to some fire weather. So just stay aware and make sure you know if we're going to be under burn bans or anything like that. And then as we move on to tomorrow, so for Friday, it's going to be a very nice warm day. It's supposed to be about 81. That's the high, but there is supposed to be some thunder, thunderstorms later on in the day. And that is about a 20% chance of those thunderstorms. So just stay updated and make sure you know if it's going to be safe to be out later in the day or not. And then as we move on to this weekend, it is going to be a nice sunny weekend. And then early next week is also going to be pretty warm and sunny. So this weekend on Saturday, it's going to be perfect to be outside. It's going to be about 69 degrees with the sun out. So much like today, the sun is going to be very out in the sky and it's going to be a very clear blue sky. And then on um, Sunday, it's pretty similar, 70 degrees, also nice and sunny. And then as we start next week, we are starting off on a nice and warm note. It's going to be 80 degrees and it's going to be sunny outside.
So then as we move on to Tuesday and Wednesday, we can see that it is going to be a little rainy both of those days. Tuesday, there's supposed to be some rain, about a 20% chance of that, but it will see, it still will be warm out. It's going to be about 80 degrees. And then as we move on to Wednesday, it's going to be similar to how Friday's supposed to be. Some thunderstorms, some lightning, but it will still be warm. It's going to be 84. That is all I have for now. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Destiny. You know, I'm not too mad about that rain. You know, with these dry temperatures and possible burn bans, I think it's something that we could definitely use. Oh, for sure. As long as the, the temperatures stay up yeah, there. Yeah, still like these warmer 70s, I'm, 80s. I'm great. All right, thank you so much, Destiny. Coming up, which southern state is practically underwater? And commotion at the Pentagon. Lauren has that and more in the social media update next. back and change it all. I would. I would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just a little moment. I could go back and change, I could go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. achieve a lot using your imagination. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to brag, but... Wait, who's that? And why is she all over these achievement awards? But with STEM, the sky's the limit. Shaboom! Use STEM to envision... Okay, I'm seeing it. Yeah! Invent... You got any ideas? I've got a few, actually. And create a better world. Told you she's super smart. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. In the land of wonder and awe, you won't believe you see what you saw. Where there's something to do for young and for old, where stories are written and then they're retold. Visit TravelOK.com today. Come see for yourself and come out to play. I'm Lauren Henry and welcome to your social media update. A big story developing this afternoon, the police took into custody a man allegedly behind one of the highest profile intelligence leaks the U.S. has seen in years. Top secret documents from the Pentagon regarding the Ukraine war and other classified information were leaked on social media, prompting the government to launch a criminal investigation. Today, a member of the Massachusetts Air National Guard has been taken into custody in connection to the leak. The guardsman has been identified as 21-year-old Jack Teixeira. We were able to speak with criminal justice professor Shauna Cleary, and here's her take on the situation. Well, there's all we know so far is that he's a 21-year-old Air National Guardsman. Uh, we don't know, we know a little bit about his background, and he was an online gamer, we know that. Um, other than that, we don't know much, and there's, there hasn't been much yet to come out, and we need to wait before we make assumptions about what was going on as far as reasons for the leak. Uh, the information will come out in due time as the FBI is on it, and they're, they're doing reports, so I would expect in the next week or so we'll know much more. And we will bring you updates as this story continues. And the streets of Fort Lauderdale are quite literally flooding our timelines. Users are sharing videos of cars making their way through extreme flooding. Although it is hard to recognize, the video you see now was taken in downtown Fort Lauderdale. Many social media users are calling this the worst flooding they have ever seen, and more rain is expected to hit the area tonight. 
and the infamous Fire Festival is rumored to be making a comeback. Many of you might remember the music festival that ultimately ended with many people losing money on tickets to an event that never happened. Now, the creator of the original Fire Festival, Billy McFarland, has tweeted that there will be a Fire Festival too. This has left social media users skeptical of the festival reboot and McFarland himself. We will keep you updated as this story comes out. Tonight is the 2023 senior show for the UCO College of Design. The show is titled Labyrinth and will take place tonight at the CHK Central Boathouse from 8 to 5, or excuse me, from 5 to 8. Admission is free for everyone, so be, bring a friend and show your support. And as the semester is winding down, you're going to see a lot more senior projects. All of us here are pretty much seniors, and it's just getting to be that really exciting time of the year. Yeah, definitely yeah, in the midst sure. of it all. Yeah. <laughs> We're finishing our capstone project. I was literally editing it before class or before yeah. the show. So it's definitely bittersweet for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, last night the Oklahoma City we Thunder had an exciting game. night. Yeah, for sure. Hayden Smith has that and more after the break. Feel the beat of nature at a park or forest near you. Find a forest and music inspired by nature at discovertheforest.org. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Hi, I'm Hayden Smith, and this is your Youth Central Sports Update. The Oklahoma City Thunder faced off against the New Orleans Pelicans on Thursday as they participated in their first ever play-in experience. Here's what happened. The Oklahoma City Thunder played in the postseason for the first time in three years on Thursday. After practice on Tuesday, Josh Giddy spoke to Youth Central about his expectations for his first postseason matchup. Making the right reads. Um, I think they're a good offensive rebounding team. Their wings, Valentunas is in there crashing, Nance is in there. So, um, us, you know, guards and wings helping our bigs out on the boards is going to be very important. But those two things are probably the main, uh, the main ones. But uh, yeah, being strong with the ball is important for these guys. You know, active with their hands and um, to, you know, tend to force a lot of turnovers. The New Orleans defenders did their best to throw Giddy off of his game on Wednesday, but were ultimately unsuccessful as Giddy finished with 31 points, 10 assists, and nine rebounds. Oklahoma City's all-star Shea Gilgis-Alexander added 32 points as the Thunder pulled away at the very end of a close and hard-fought contest with a final score of 123 to 118. Oklahoma City will now travel to Minnesota to face the Timberwolves on Friday. The winner of that game will claim the eighth seed in the Western Conference and advance to the first round of the NBA playoffs. Very exciting stuff. I can't wait to see what happens with that on Friday. As for right here on campus, the, Bronco, the Broncos baseball team has 27 wins and 11 losses on the season and have won five in a row.
They will look to build on that win streak when they host a three-game series against Northwest Missouri this weekend. UCO's softball team has also had some great success this season. The Lady Broncos are 12-2 in MIAA play and 30-5 overall. They will travel to Tahlequah on Friday to play a doubleheader against Northeastern State and then will turn around and play another doubleheader against 8th-ranked Rogers State on Saturday. That's all the time I have for sports today. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Hayden. Definitely an exciting season for the Thunder, for sure. Well, when we come back, we'll have your last look at weather. Feel the beat of nature at a park or forest near you. Find a forest and music inspired by nature at discovertheforest.org. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Welcome back, guys. So I have your last look at weather right now. So tonight is going to be the perfect day if you want to get outside while the sun sets because it's going to be nice and warm. The low for tonight is 60 degrees, and so that's very, very warm, especially for a low. It is going to be a little windy, though, because the winds are going to be blowing south at 11 to about 15 miles per hour, but there are going to be some higher gusts of wind that are up in the 20s. So just keep that in mind. But then it is also going to be a little humid tonight. The humidity rate is going to be about 33%. And then there's going to be no chance of rain tonight. So like I said, it is a perfect night to go out, maybe enjoy a late night picnic or anything like that, any fun outdoors activities tonight. That is all I have for now. Back to you guys at the desk. For sure, that weather has just been absolutely beautiful. Oh, for sure. We can't stress this enough. Go out and enjoy that weather. Utilize it because it is going to get hot soon. But yeah. if you are looking for a couple things to get out and do this week, you can head out to the fairgrounds and visit the farm show. U.S. Central reporter Sam Kozlowski took the trip himself. Here's what they have to offer. All right, well, I mean, I know we weren't really able to see it, but I do know <laughs> that, difficulties. you know, with this beautiful weather, any any event you can do where you go outside, yeah, obviously do you have any take advantage of it for this weekend with this nice weather. Um, I mean, well, it's going to rain a little bit. That's true, and we are looking forward to the rain. Yeah, but, just um, a bit. Yeah, I mean, just, just going out on walks in the evening, especially since, you know, with daylight savings and everything, mm -hmm. you have more time to do that. So definitely go out and enjoy this beautiful weather. Yeah, before it gets way too hot, utilize this amazing spring temperatures. For sure. That's all the time we have today. I'm Eden Jones. And I'm Jocelyn Chipperdecker. Y'all have a great night. <laughs>